Let me read to you a passage from the ninth chapter of St. John's Gospel. The whole passage is verses 1 to 41. It's the Gospel for the fourth Sunday of Lent, year A. I shall only read the early part of the passage. It is long, and so the rest you could read for yourself. Chapter 9, verses 1 to 41. St. John writes in the early part of that passage, As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming, when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, he spat on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means scent. So the man went and washed and came home, seeing. His neighbours, and those who had formerly seen him begging, asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was, others said no, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes opened? they demanded. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and then I could see. Where is this man? they asked him. I don't know, he said. They brought him to the Pharisees, who, the man who had been born blind. Now, the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. I invite you to read the rest of that passage and to reflect on it. But what does it suggest to us? Well, our Gospel passage today is a long one from the Gospel of St. John. It is universally appreciated among readers of Scripture that in his Gospel, St. John understands the miracles of our Lord as signs. They reveal who our Lord is and the nature of his mission, not only then, but above all, now. This is his mission, now in the life of his body, the Church. The sacraments of the Church are actions of Christ, signifying and revealing what he is doing now for us, for us who by faith and baptism live in him. The word and preaching of the church is the word of Christ who continues to speak to us, to us, his brothers and sisters. Christ is not a past religious teacher who from the grave speaks through written documents which have their own contemporary masters. No, he lives now with us. He is real. He abides in his body, the church. He is God with us now. He acts just as much now as he did then. What he did then is a sign of what he does now. St. John, the author of our Gospel passage, was with the Master when he spoke and worked his miracles. And during the years of his long life, St. John pondered the words he reports and the events he narrates. The living person of Jesus, now risen, would have been at the forefront of his mind and heart all his long and apostolic life. I suspect that the events portrayed in his Gospel and the words of our Lord as recorded there are those that impressed themselves particularly on his loving memory. He may have written them down with more and more ample detail as he remembered and preached on them. He would have constantly and prayerfully returned to his own text 
as it gradually developed, sensing, like the prophets, that both in his recall and in his understanding he was guided by the Holy Spirit. All he remembered related to the great person who lived now and who was constantly at hand. What he wrote, he knew was the written word of the living Jesus, who was the love of his life. That love, the living and risen Jesus, who had shown such special love for him, he communed with as he preached the word, and especially as he celebrated the Holy Eucharist and the sacraments. All this is to say that as we read our Gospel passage today, as with any Gospel passage, our sense of the present reality of Jesus ought deepen. Very many people think of Jesus as if he is, well, a mere thought, an image before them, an image, an historical religious figure that had great impact a memory, an example for us, a sign, the source of a body of teaching, all of these and more, but not as a living person near at hand. Well then, let his words speak to us as coming from him now. In our passage today, our Lord is questioned about the blindness afflicting the, a person nearby. Whose was the moral fault? that brought this punishment, was the question they asked. Our Lord said that the blindness of the man was allowed by God in order that God's action might be displayed in his life. We ought incidentally remember those words whenever we see any handicapped person. His debility is allowed by God in order that God's work may be done. Time and again, I have seen film clips showing the extraordinary love and dedication of parents of profoundly handicapped persons. God is at work in and through them, and the handicapped person is being touched and sustained by God through them, and they themselves are being made more and more like unto God due to their loving dedication and the grace of God. In our Gospel scene today, the blindness of the man was the occasion for our Lord's teaching and demonstration about his own absolute and unique status as the light of the world. Present in the church is this light that is Christ, not just one among many lights, but as the light, the one light that enlightens and is meant to enlighten every man coming into the world, as St. John puts it in his prologue. What a wonderful figure to explain Christ, the light. I remember years ago, when I was in Peru, I was coming home on horseback from being out celebrating Mass in a village. Darkness fell, and how dark it was. I had no light at all. Well, we need light for our life, and far more so for our spiritual life. Christ is that light. And not just for those who happen to choose him. He is the light of the world. Without him, we are like that blind man prior to his cure by Christ. Perhaps most people in the world have at least heard of Christ. They would look on him as a light, a light among many lights, but not the light. I wonder if even many Christians look on Christ as merely a light, which is to say, as one light among many. As we think of our Lord stating categorically that he is the light of the world, and then going on to demonstrate this by a sign, a miracle, let us resolve to live by his light. He is the true and living light of the world. And let us resolve to bring that light to others.